Okay, excellent. Well, welcome everybody to our first webinar of uh, fall 2018. Today, I'm Brian Jennings, um, as you can probably see looking at the Zoom. Uh, today, we're going to discuss a book list that was started uh, during the Summer Institute in Digital Literacy. Um, so after taking a look at the list, I added a couple of titles myself. I, I don't know if anybody wants to start the discussion. Or I can discuss, start the discussion, I guess. Or, um, okay. Actually, so uh, we put together just a little bit of an agenda just to kind of introduce Michael and I and um, uh, kind of what this book club is and how it came together. So I don't know, Michael, would, would you like to go into any of that? Or? Mm, yeah, if you like. Um, so actually, so I'm Michael, actually. So I hope everybody hears me. And I'm working at the American University of Paris and with Samantha and then I think during the last um, Summer Institute on Digital Literacy, there were a couple of people coming together at one point and uh, we had a round table about talking about the Media Cup, right, uh, Samantha? And um, so we thought we started like this project. And um, so we're here right now to to maybe think about it and also exchange ideas. And um, so maybe we thought first we're gonna start with introducing ourselves. And then afterwards we might maybe exchange a couple of ideas how we would like to set it up. Is that right, Samantha? Yes, very nice. So I'm gonna start. So I'm Michael, I work at the American University of Paris. I'm the user services librarian. And um, I do mainly instruction of information literacy, research help, helping students do research. I do a bit of committee work, and I'm also um, the chair of the, another uh, consortia called Amical. And within this consortia, I'm part of the information literacy committee. So if you have questions, you can ask me, of course, but I don't want to go too much into details. So maybe Samantha, you want to? Go next. Yeah, um, so I'm Samantha. Um, I am a PhD student at the University of Hong Kong. Um, I'm studying news and media literacy, um, and I'm working with Renee on uh, the media liter uh, the uh, media education lab and the Mind Over uh, Media project. Um, and I did my first um, summer institute over the summer where I met uh, Renee and Yanti and Michael and Jason. Um, and probably some other people on the call that I can't see all together right now, so apologies, but hello. Um, and I'm really excited about this because actually this whole thing came about because one day I kind of kind of bum rushed Renee and was like, hey, you know, I'm studying in Hong Kong, I'm all by myself, I really need some reading to get me caught up on digital literacy and I just, I don't know what I'm doing, help me. And she's like, yeah, sure, let's have lunch and talk about books. And I was like, sweet. So not only did I get to sit and talk with Renee about books, but we ended up with this group of like 12 people um, who ended up just kind of throwing out titles related to digital literacy and education and critical thinking. And we were all so stoked about it that it seemed too good to just keep it like, you know, between us. And so um, that's kind of how the idea of the book come club came about and I'm really excited to be a part of it and um, to work with Michael to help kick it off was really great because um, we're a dynamic duo. So um, yeah, I'm excited to meet you guys and to um, talk more about how to get this launched. So uh, maybe everyone else on the call would like to say a couple words too. I don't know how to maybe, Yanti, do you have any recommendations or Brian, maybe do you have any recommendations on how to go through the list of everyone here on the call. Samantha, you call on someone and then the person who speaks next calls on the next person. It's awesome. like that train. Well, Renee, you just volunteered yourself. <laughs> who is Renee? I, I am Renee Yacht. I'm here. It's uh, midnight in Croatia, but I'm so glad to see you all. Uh, I, I, I've been waiting for this idea of a book club for years and years because uh, however, however you cut it, it's way more fun to read when you can also share ideas with people. So thanks for joining us, you guys. I'm calling on Jason next. Okay, okay, just unmuted myself. Uh, my name is Jason. I teach at uh, Gilgivet Community College. Um, it's a very rural, rural school. 
up in northern Michigan. And, and um, I, yeah, I, I was I got to be a part of that conversation at lunch. And it was um, I think I came from a very similar place um, where I just so many books were mentioned that maybe I knew the author, but I didn't haven't read it yet. And I haven't even heard of it. And I just wanted to um, expand uh, you know, my knowledge of digital literacy. And with my teaching duties, I'm just, I've just left, uh, finished a PhD program. And now I'm teaching at a very composition heavy, teaching a lot of remedial writing. And I'm trying to figure out how my role as a teacher right now fits in with my research in digital me uh, media. And so this seems like a great place to, to kind of explore that and also explore in what ways I can fit into the, the media education lab too. Um, so, and I will call on uh, Mary Wallace. I had a feeling I was coming next. <laughs> so, uh, hi everybody. Um, I've met most of you, I hey, believe, Bobby. over this Sorry. summer. Hey. And, and uh, yeah, I am actually coming to you from Uniontown, Pennsylvania, where we are flooding like crazy. I don't know about the rest of, um, of, of the, the nation and up east, how bad it is. Uh, but it, it's like we're ready to build arcs. So oh. if anybody has a good um, book on, on how to do that, we're ready for that. But, um, but I come to you as a practitioner. I am a technology coordinator um, for a school district and um, have been along um, for this ride in uh, digital literacy for going on three years. And uh, my journey started, um, you know, it, at the very, um, it was the, Summer Institute two years ago, and it hasn't stopped since. And I just wanted to be able to be a, continue to be a part of this community so that I can continue my um, my own personal uh, reading and also have some fabulous resources to share out with colleagues because I work daily with principals and teachers um, who are constantly asking me for um, great resources, but in that leadership capacity. So I'll be be looking for. Um, some other titles to, to share because, you know, I, I can never get enough for them. So it's always good to, to be along on um, these journeys with you guys. And I will call on the other Mary. Mary, you're, there you go. Yeah, thanks. I, um, thanks, Mary. I am um, Mary as well, and I am a PhD student too, um, but I'm also a professor, and I did the certificate program last year, and I thought I'd join this book club because I'm always looking for good things to read for my studies and as PD. And I'll call on Gina. Hi, I'm Gina Marcello. Um, I'm in New Jersey at the Jersey Shore. We are also experiencing major flooding. I am a faculty member at Georgian Court University, and I'm here because Renee was my outside member for my dissertation. I graduated from Rutgers University in 2008, and I'm the program chair for the digital communication program at um, Georgian Court. So I'm really here to just see and learn from uh, you guys, so I'm happy to be here. And I will call on Walter. Can Walter talk? Are you there? Hi. Listen? Yes, I'm Hi. Sure we can hear you. Hi. Hi, I am Walter. I am teacher in uh, Colombia. Um, and I am in, in I am living in Colombia and um, hola hola yeah Walter we can hear yeah ah uh, yeah yes I excuse me because I now don't mind the don't mind the idiom the not don't speak English uh, quick and I am teacher and um, and we had and we had work in media education in a school and uh, thank you excellent okay walter uh i'll choose someone for you let's go with uh r bellevue bellevue hi can you hear me 
Yes. Hi. Uh, I'm sorry. I just tuned in. So what do you want from me? <laughs> oh, we're just doing um, introductions. Oh, okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ralph Bellavo. I teach at the University of Oklahoma, and I teach in uh, the Gaylord College of Journalism and Mass Communication, and I've been involved in media literacy stuff for a long time. Um, taught high school a long time ago, um, worked in the media before that. Um, good to see you. Okay, and I forgot to say, you you choose the next person. Okay, I don't know who's been picked oh, already. Or I can do it. Uh, okay, yeah, why don't you go ahead? Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Let's get... We got Walter... Amy. You're up, if you're there. Oh, Hello. I'm here. <laughs> I'm hiding behind my... Uh... Okay, I wasn't expecting to be on cam, so I'm like in a sundress. <laughs> <laughs> completely cash. Me too. Hi, Amy. I'll do it. Ta -da. Can you see me? Um, hi, I'm Amy Jussel. I'm out here in the Silicon Valley. And my interest in uh, media literacy is, is deep and, and wide ranging. Um, <laughs> I'm actually, I'm loving the, the resources that you put up already. And uh, I love the article that uh, was, was recently sort of a 10 key reading one. I don't know if anybody was reading that, but I thought that was a great uh, book club kind of start. Um, and I'm trying to think of, I think it was on the, uh, the UK uh, crew posted that, Parenting for a Digital Future or whatever. But anyway, um, I'm very interested in, in wanting to hear about the intersection of uh, how much the digital literacy can uh, cross over with, with the corporations. I'm seeing a lot of people talking about how DigiSit should be taken over by uh, some of the people that are the perpetrators, including you know Google and Facebook and all that. Um, there was a recent piece, in fact, I'll throw it in the chat thing. Uh, it was a survey of you know parents think tech companies should help build the kids' digital skills, which you know I think there there is something to that. But my question, of course, then becomes, and what does that do with data privacy and this and that and the other? So I'm, I'm interested in kind of bridging both sides of this and re-kicking off my um, shapingyouth.org, which is sort of a conversation about the pros and cons, point, counterpoint on some of these issues so that we can see best practices and ways to work together. I'm more of a hands-on applied science person when it comes to media literacy to to use um, digital literacy and media literacy with the kids. So I'm, I'm interested in learning more, a lifelong learner. <laughs> did, you, uh, did you have anybody you'd prefer to go next or do you want me to choose? Uh, go ahead and choose because I'm not sure who all. Oh, great. I'm not back. keeping track of it well. Okay, thanks. Um, let's hear from, did we hear from Michael Spikes yet? No, I'm here. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Hi, Michael. Hello. Um, so, hey, everyone. I'm Mike Spikes. I am uh, currently a project manager with the Center for News Literacy at Stony Brook University. And despite the fact that Stony Brook is in New York, I'm actually based in Chicago. So I'm coming to you from there, uh, right outside of Chicago, uh, where I've been doing training and news literacy uh, skills and concepts for teachers around the state of Illinois, and also uh, more recently for librarians, um, and helping them to use some of their skills to work with their adult patrons, um, to develop programs for the adult patrons, um, kind of based around our model of uh, news literacy education. But along with that, um, I will also be starting in another two weeks uh, PhD program at Northwestern University School of Education and Social Policy in the Learning Sciences, where um, I'm really hoping to have an opportunity to dig into what do sort of be sort of um, interventions in news literacy, such as, you know, teaching a class or playing a game or reading a checklist. What do these things actually do? Do they actually drive folks to actually change their behaviors uh, because as a practitioner and I've been working with the center for about the past six years now and actually two years before that I was working with them just as a teacher um, I was a media studies teacher in the Washington DC public schools um, at that time when I first heard about um, the news literacy curriculum 
Um, I've just found it as a practitioner, you know, so much of our work is so focused on the doing part that we don't always take as much time as needed to really understand is what we are doing actually doing something. So um, in that case, uh, I was actually invited to this group uh, by Samantha. Um, Samantha and I uh, have been acquainted with one another for about the past year. Uh, we met at a conference a year ago that I think was held at Stony Brook on news literacy. And the University of Hong Kong is one of our very strong partners who has been using some of our curriculum tools. And um, Samantha and I had a chance to really almost start a quasi book club of our own because as a new uh, PhD student, I knew I was going to really have to get more familiar and more comfortable with reading uh, longer texts on a regular basis. So we sort of started up and then she invited me to this group. So I'm really um, excited to learn from everybody here. And I um, apologize for not being on the video um, today because I'm actually uh, recovering from having a tooth pulled a little bit earlier today. So I may be in and out. So I didn't want to be uh, turning my camera on and off and seeming like I was being rude to folks. So I am here. And uh, I guess it's my turn to pick somebody, and I'm going to pick somebody else that's not on video because I think everybody on video has gone. So I'm going to pick Kelsey. Hi, Kelsey. Hello. So um, I'm calling from New York. Um, I'm interested in the club, uh, the book club, because I've done media literacy work for several years now. Um, and I've been involved with the Media Education Lab um, a few years back. And I just know the power of getting involved with groups to stay committed to the cause and find amazing voices and support. And yeah, I'm hoping to get a lot out of this group. So I might have to run in a little bit from this meeting, but I've been very interested and will follow up if I need to. We're glad you're here. Uh, Tamson, you're next. Tamson, I think you muted when you meant to unmute, maybe. Okay, maybe we'll save Tamson and we haven't heard from Yanti. So there I am. I'm oh, back. Sorry. Yanti, you can hear me now? on hold. Hi, Tamson. Hi there. Good morning, or Joseon, as we say here in Hong Kong. I'm also here at 6 a.m. on Samantha's time, uh, joining you, which is why I do not have the video on as well. I, uh, I come to you from Canada originally, where I worked as a reporter for the Canadian press uh, for most of a decade in uh, journalism back in Canada, but now I am an editor for the international opinion section of the New York Times here in Hong Kong. And as I've been explaining to my family back home recently, uh, who apparently don't know what I do. I work for the section that came out with the anonymous op-ed this past week, I guess last week now. Uh, and now I think my parents maybe understand what I do a little bit better. So there is a very good uh, real world example of not quite understanding the media world right in my own family. I'm very happy to join everybody here and participate however I can. And I'm not sure who hasn't gone yet. Uh, um, I so think perhaps I can have your last assistance. One, but thanks very much. Yanti? So I'm trying to tweet and, and work on getting us uh, people more to the book club. Hi, everybody. I'm Yanti. I'm the uh, Associate Director of the Media Education Lab, Assistant Professor at Columbia College. Um, so I was part of the roundtable talking about books, which um, that's not my forte, though now I'm um, listening to audiobooks, which makes it much easier in my commute of an hour and a half each day. So um, I like it that we're calling it a media club and that we're looking at different texts and always happy to jump with other folks and talk about uh, media literacy and see common threads and talking about, you know, what's our ideas and how we're going to make it into a useful practice. So happy to join. All right, excellent.
Excellent. Um, thanks, everybody. Uh, Samantha and Michael, you said you had an agenda set up. Um, so if you wanted to begin with that, that'd be great. You, you want to jump in right away, Samantha, or is it? Uh... Yeah, let's jump in. We're already, we're all in now, right? <laughs> Somehow, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Thanks everybody for sharing like all the details and all the, it's very interesting, like it's also like all these different um, backgrounds that come together right here. And I think this is kind of, kind of very interesting actually, I believe, to have these different backgrounds also like from different places like Hong Kong, Paris, like all the places in the US, um, which probably is going to make like the whole media club or book club very, very interesting. I, I hope so. And um, so I'm not sure what we're going to talk right away, Samantha. Do you want to go like strictly with the agenda? Or? Yeah, well, let's, let's kind of flow with it a little bit. I think it's worth pointing out at this point that, um, like Yancy mentioned, and you just kind of emphasized, this is a media club, not just a book club. Um, and I think this was actually Yanti's idea at the table that day. Um, that we should include other kinds of media than books. Um, there's a lot of information being developed now that um, is really helpful that comes in video and, um, and verbal form. Podcasts are great these days. Um, so we decided to um, go ahead and include those other kinds of media. So as you're looking at the, um, at the list, which uh, we might go over more later in the agenda, um, at the bottom you'll see different tabs for different kinds of content. Um, and everyone who has access to this document can edit, um, add to it. Just be sure to tell us who to thank for it so we can ask you questions, follow up questions if we can't find the title, et cetera. Um, that will really help us um, facilitate. Um, Michael, do you want to talk about what we want to learn from each other? Um, as much as possible, I guess. Uh, I think it's, I'm always like, um, my, personally, I'm always like interested in to, uh, and the exchange actually, like in, uh, in discussing. Uh, because many times I read like an article and then actually I put it aside again, but I know that for sure, like if I'm gonna discuss it with some other people, so I'm gonna hear like these different opinions. And for me, that's actually like really this enriching thing. So that's, that's for me, like we really like this, the big plus of like a, a media club. Um, also like, like you just said, like any other media, doc, if you're gonna listen to a podcast and you say this was very interesting, to share like an exchange and to discuss it, for me this is something. And also like then to stay up to date, of course. Like uh, it's not always easy to stay up to date. What is kind of at the moment what people are talking about. Uh, so these are really like a main uh, main aspects and um, aims uh, that I hope that we're going to establish with the, the book club or the media club. And um, but I think we discussed too much about. I think it's also like to. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, so the second half of our time that we spend together today, we'll kind of be talking about logistics. Of course, this is the first time that we've come together in this club, and um, we kind of yeah. want it to be to belong to everyone um, and give everyone the chance to contribute and kind of set some, um, I don't know what the word would be, I don't know, contribute to, I guess, like when we meet, for example, how often we discuss titles. Um, Etc. So, uh, so we'll do that, but maybe just kind of um, to grow a little bit on what Michael was just saying. Um, does anyone else want to kind of volunteer their thoughts on what they hope to get out of the book club or the media club? Um, I'll say I'll say something. I mean, I, I just kind of agree with uh, on one hand with what with what Michael was saying. Uh, as far as I know, a lot of times, like I, I read these things, and I'm, and I'm reading so much that uh, when it comes to um, searching for that, like the the relevance part of it, that all of a sudden I've I've lost it in a sea of other books I've read. And so, being part of a community where I can discuss those ideas and talk about those books and read new things um, kind of just helps cement it in 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 my mind and then kind of bring it to the forefront. But also, I was going to say um, one thing I'm hoping to get out of it uh, too is is like, a, and maybe this is something we can add to that list. But a, a like a looking for section, like I'm looking for like who is talking about social media in these ways right now, um, or like the one thing I'm I'm thinking a lot about is 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 there much written about um, digital media in the remedial classroom? Um, and so like 
kind of like, I, I haven't found these books yet, but I'm sure they're out there. And this is a great kind of resource to, to look for those things. That's such a great idea. I'm adding a tab for that right now, Jason. Yeah, I like it too. So I, I really like the idea of the looking for section. And I would say that, you know, from my point of view, I have two purposes. One is I would like people who have read some of the books on this list to tell me a little bit about them so almost so I don't have to read them, right? Or I can decide whether I want to read them or not based on what you say about them, right? So that's one thing I want. And then the other thing I think it would be cool if we actually like read something together and then tore it apart. <laughs> so all three of those things seem important. You know, they're looking for the uh, talk about the book and explain to me why it's important so I don't have to read it and maybe we could read something together. I agree with that. Um, this is uh, Mike, the other Mike. Uh, I think one thing that I would really look to get out of this is what was talked about a little bit earlier, which was if there's a book that I'm picking up, um, what should I be looking to get out of it? Um, I've been a, a radio and sort of video and media producer for so long that I am so much a person that's just like get to the point that lots of times I read books and I just think there's just way too many ideas here for me to take in at once and I find myself walking away from books not really gaining a few insights but a lot a week later going what was that thing I talked about because or what is that thing they talked about I forgot about it because it was buried in with a lot of other stuff so I kind of I feel like it would be great to have who are in the, I mean, I, like, I think another person mentioned here, I listen to a lot of audio books, but at fiction audio books, I'm not really looking to get a lot of insights from it. But again, for myself personally, taking this next step to becoming uh, a more scholarly person, you know, it's kind of like understanding, like, how should I look at reading books and how can I get through these longer texts a lot easier and sort of gain insights that I really can take in and understand and really sort of embody so that I can start to use those to form some of my own thoughts a little bit better. I mean, I have some on certain things I've been working on, but would love to gain more insights from others on that. So that would probably be one of my main things. And also like others have said, just to have a group of like-minded individuals to talk about some of these issues with. And hopefully, in some cases, unlike-minded individuals. That too. Okay, so so here's my here's my question for people who are uh, around the table. Um, go to the list. You can open up the chat room and click on the link, and uh, scan through the list and um, call out. Uh, a title that looks relevant, interesting, important, or add one to the list. So let's get a sense of where the people are in the room about the, the list that's in, in developing so far. So what jumps out at you that seems like, uh, you know, that grabs your interest or attention? Who wants to go first? Uh, Renee, uh, I'll go first if the host is okay to do that. Um, the one that jumped out at me immediately because I love it is uh, Daniel Kahneman's thinking. Um, it really does really quickly think it fast and slow. To, to raise your hand if you're familiar with it. Okay, so a couple of you. So thinking fast and slow talks about um, the way your brain works. Uh, there are two. I forget exactly the the terms he uses. But they, let's say level one and level two thinking. Level one thinking is uh, what happens quickly, your immediate reaction. Um, level two is what happens when you have time to reflect on it. And me, when I'm looking at the way people are reacting to media these days, it's way too much level one. Um, I, I know everyone's very emotional with things. Um, so that's a really worthwhile one in general, but especially I think for dealing with media and actually leads to one that I added on here, which is Descartes' error, um, which kind of expands on 
that type of thinking where Descartes uh, put out there that we have the rational brain versus the emotional brain and science since then in the hundreds of years since then has discovered, no, there's not really that disconnect. Everything is connected emotionally and rationally. Um, so again, fast thinking and slow thinking. Uh, highly recommend both of those. Hi, uh, Gina here. Um, if I could add something, I looked at the list and um, so I come from a more traditional media studies background and I'm teaching, um, you know, in a communication graphic design and multimedia department. So actually I'm now moved more to creative arts in combination with media. So it's a very applied media studies program. And one of the things I like, a book I'd like to suggest if you haven't read it is No Sense of Place by Joshua Meyerowitz. It's a canon, I, I think, in uh, media studies. And it may, for those of you that are in doctoral programs related to media studies, communication, media literacy, it help with some, uh, formulate some ways to kind of see and think. He combines McLuhan's work um, with, uh, oh, I should know this. I'm drawing a blank. He draws a lot Goffman, of Goffman. Here. Goffman. Irving and Goffman, Goffman. Yes, thank you. And Irving Goffman. Yes. And Irving Goffman, the idea of the dramaturgical model, front stage, backstage. So if you're interested in the impact of social media, I think it gives a really nice way to, when, when Josh wrote that book, it was really the impact of television. But I think you can reread it and reframe a lot of his argument in terms of social media. Awesome. That sounds like a really good one, too. Um, okay, so for the sake of time, I'm going to move us on now, if that's okay with everybody. And um, so one thing that we wanted to do was look at this list together. Um, uh, oh, is this it? Can you wait? I think I'm doing it. Hang on. I'm doing it. Am I doing yes, it? Doing. Yay! Okay. Yay, very nice. Excellent. <laughs> um, okay. So everyone can see the list, yeah? Okay. So basically, these are the tabs that we talked about. Um, the written work, the audio work. Um, there's only a couple there. Video work. Oh, yeah, there's one here now. Oh, that's a good one. Michael, you added that, didn't you? <laughs> I, I did, yes. Um, and then here's our new tab for um, what I'm looking for. So it's really easy, like I said before, everybody has um, access to edit by this, so please do just be autonomous and go for it. Um, yeah, so does anybody have questions or suggestions of, about how we can make this function better for all of us? Jason, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to unmute my audio. Um, I just had one one thing to add, something that's kind of helped me a little bit. Um, and and when Mike was talking, it made me think of this. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys use um, um, what is the online um, the digital library that's associated with the public libraries. I know in Rhode Island we have them here in Michigan too. Um, the DPLA. What is it? The DPLA. DPLA. Is that it? I'm thinking of something, uh, it might be the same thing. Let me just look at my phone real quick. It's uh, Overdrive. Uh, Overdrive is maybe the name of the, the, the app, but if you have a public um, library account anywhere, then you can, they have audiobooks and eBooks that you can Libby. get. And I've, What is that? Libby. Libby, yeah. And I know in Michigan, they call it something a little bit different too. Um, but it's, it's, uh, I've recently kind of found some, some pretty cool stuff on it. Um, uh, like I just listened to Neil Postman's we're amusing ourselves to death. Um, and some, some of the classics are on there. There's not a lot of really up. I mean, not a lot of it's really up to date, but it is kind of a nice way to, for me, it's been a nice way to catch up on some of the things that I've missed. Um, and so I don't know, I was just thinking maybe that can be added in the audio section, but just thinking of, um, overdrive as a uh, place to access these books for free check them out for a library and be able to listen to them when you're you know driving or running or whatever so that that actually gives me the idea to add another tab at the risk of making this a little bit too tabtastic 
Um, maybe we can add another tab for um, resources, like, like where to find things that we can access um, at low or no cost. Um, and this would be a really great place for people um, who are not in the U.S. to also contribute because, um, of course, it, within the U.S. there's a lot of uh, resources, but outside of the U.S. It's, it can be difficult to find things sometimes. So is everybody cool with me adding yet another tab for that? I don't know if it needs to be another tab, Samantha, but it could be another column at the end of each tab where to find it, right? So then when people are identifying the resource, they make maybe they make a link or they describe where to find it because then it's all, then everything you need is all on one page. So maybe it's just at the end of the column as opposed to a new tab. Yeah. Right. Well, my concern about that is only that, um, like, let's say, for example, in um, uh, in the U.S., something might be available on a particular like library website. So you link to it, but then maybe in Colombia, it's not available through that same source. Got it. Good point. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we wanted to talk about were. Um, if anyone had any suggestions on these these exact kinds of things where um, we can help this function help this group function better since we are all coming together from such different places and crazy different time zones um, if there are any tools or resources that you guys might be aware of that will help us function together as a group um, better so perhaps we can all just keep thinking about that and the best option that won't clutter our space but also will be functional for us Take a look at the comment from um, on the chat room, Sam. Okay, I'm going to stop my screen share because <laughs> I'm pretty unfamiliar with it and it's going to um, mess me up a little bit. So, okay. Who suggested something on the chat room that was sounded really cool? Oh, Mary Wallace. Mary Wallace suggested something cool on the chat room. She writes, maybe we could create a Flipgrid book review grid of the books we've already read so that you you'd get like a little 90 second uh here's what i loved about the book that that, that could be like a good cheat sheet right i love that it's like the end of reading rainbow do you guys remember that no oh. <laughs> i have to read that book i guess no it's but, a tv uh, show from like the 80s <laughs> samantha i remember it so i can yeah. i can co-sign on the reading rainbow <laughs> Maybe I'm <laughs> um, that's a great idea. I'm kidding, of course. But yeah, like this is really a nice idea. I really like that as well. So anyway, um, this is somehow like what we would like. Anybody who has like ideas, bring them in. You see, they don't have to come today. Um, but I think also like, let's say for scheduling things or anything that can actually make that club uh, run better. Please feel free to, it's not Sam and my project or it's everybody who's actually going to bring in their energy to the project or to the club. And that's actually how then it's going to run the best way, I believe. So, and that brings me also like to the question how we should somehow decide what we're going to read or what we're going to watch for next time. Um, these are kind of very pragmatic questions. So I'm not sure if you want to jump into the this discussion a bit Sam right now I think so we have about 20 minutes left so it might be good to get on with like the the less fun part <laughs> I like, I, I, like the idea, I like I, I like the idea of the of the people who are on this call contributing to the list right and that's already happened Gina, Gina tonight suggested uh, uh, something um, so I like the idea of everybody contributing to the list I think the decision about whether and how we go about the process of collaborative reading that that's going to take some thinking like is there one book on this list that just we all just kind of like yes we really want to read that <laughs> i don't know i don't know either <laughs> i have no idea i'm not i'm not sure how to make that work so should we I guess we're not going to vote on that right now well, perhaps unless I, unless anyone else has an idea that's um, that can be implemented within the next, like, let's say, 24 to 48 hours, perhaps for this round, we can maybe vote by putting some sort of like if there's a title that you like, whether it be written, audio, etc., 
um, mark, mark that in a, a cell to the right of that title um, by either like maybe putting an X and then, so let's say that you want to read Thinking Fast and Slow. At the end of the information for that title, you would put an X in the next cell. And then if, if you've already decided on that title and someone else has already put an X there, then you put X in the cell to the right of that one. So it kind of is like a voting mechanism. And maybe we can see maybe within the next two days um, which title has the most X's and we run with that one. Um, keeping in mind that we have proposed our next meeting to be October 1st, um, which we also need to talk a little bit more about as far as um, what, what routine day is best for everyone. Um, but again, keeping in mind for this first go around that we're gonna have a little bit less time than, than normal um, to actually consume our media. Also, it's important to, to note that we've scheduled three online meetings until the winter, like until mm -hmm. uh, January, then we'll continue. But we're talking for now only on the upcoming three meetings. And we can also say like Thinking Fast and Slow, for example, is a gigantic book. We can also split it up um, so that it's a little bit easier to tackle. And perhaps um, Brian or I know Ken, you've read it as well. Um, perhaps people who've read it before can provide some guidance on, on a great, a good way to kind of split it up to be more manageable. Yeah, that's cool. Or people could choose and read any, any chapter they want. And then we'd have a really interesting discussion about the different ideas that are in the book. Um, I think it's cool that people are already starting to vote. So that's a good sign. Um, so you might want to, if you want to, you can start, uh, voting now. And, and is it the kind of thing, um, Sam and Michael, where you expect us to just vote for one text, or is this one of those vote early, vote often kind of things? The more the merrier? The more the merrier. I have not given any thought for that from the moment. You see, but the more the merrier sounds good to me. <laughs> Does that sound good to everyone else? Sure, yeah. Um, if I, can I just touch on something Renee said a little earlier? Um, sure. Is that okay? So, Renee, what jumped out at me was when you said, uh, to paraphrase, tell me what I need to get out of this book. Um, I think a book like Thinking Fast and Thinking Slow is so dense and um, a lot of the problem with a lot of these books is they're, they're just, they're one idea and because of uh, requirements of the writing, they, they go on and on and on. Thinking Fast and Thinking Slow, I think, could be really summed up pretty quickly. Um, so maybe are there even ones if if you're familiar with them, maybe somebody could put a synopsis uh, rather than spend tons and tons of time, not to denigrate uh, Kahneman's writing, but it, it might be more productive that way. That sounds like a great use for the Flipgrid idea that I don't remember who suggested it now, but um, to do like just a, quick couple of minutes of uh, review of the book and highlighting the main points. Um, so we'll, we'll set up the um, Flipgrid. Um, it, is anyone here not familiar with Flipgrid? I can't see everybody, but if I'm you're not. Not, I'm not familiar, okay. please elaborate. Okay, so um, I'm barely familiar with it myself. We used it at the, um, the summit over the summer. Um, but basically, it's kind of like a bulletin board of everyone's short videos. I think they can be up to five minutes. And you just basically record yourself talking about whatever the topic of the board is. In this case, it would be the media um, that, we're, that we're talking about. So Tamsin, if you were to do one about thinking fast and slow, you would take I don't know, three to five minutes to kind of talk about the book, your experience with it, the, the main points that you think deserve highlighting. Um, and then it would be posted on this one page with everyone else's book reviews so that we can all see all of them. And you can interact with the posts um, by, um, I think you can add uh, maybe emojis or icons and also kind of comment up at the bottom. Um, so it's a really cool tool for kind of sharing um, video clips, if that makes sense. Hi. So my, um, I, sorry, go ahead. No, no I was just going to um, add or maybe just something I was thinking about. 
one of the things I think that make a, makes a group like this powerful is the ability for us to talk and bounce ideas off of each other because that's when the creativity occurs. So, and you sort of have those moments of insight. So I'm a little concerned that we might be too heavy on adding more writing and more viewing and less conversation. So I don't know how to solve that, but if there would be a way that we could be able to take a particular topic and really discuss it among us from our, variety, you know, our various points of view, I, I would find that very, very helpful because I can always read or watch a video on YouTube, but I can't hear from someone teaching in Hong Kong. And I, that would you know, perhaps might be a really interesting way to approach something that I might not have thought about. So it, I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know how to solve it, but it was just something I was thinking about. Uh, one of the things that's really cool about Zoom, Gina, is that it might have a solution uh, in it. So for instance, right now we could take the, well, it looks like there's four, eight, 12, there's 13 of us are, who are online. We could divide up the 13 of us into four small groups and have a small group conversation, right? So that's a really cool feature of Zoom. It lets us break into small groups. So one of the things that could be cool is that let's just say you and I decided we wanted to read the power of two mm -hmm. for next meeting. Like we could have a 20 minute conversation on collaboration and creativity. And that could be mm -hmm. just a few people, not the whole 12 of us, because right. simultaneous conversations could be happening at the same time. Right. So that could be a really fun way to have more intense conversations with a smaller group where you're doing more talking and listening. Always a plus. Mm -hmm. One thing that I've done that might, um, that might kind of facilitate that too is um, sometimes in my classrooms when I'm worried that my students aren't, aren't getting a chance to kind of talk and, and elaborate that it's more about just the, the text is, uh, we'll, like li we'll live tweet our reading of whatever we're reading where I'll give them like kind of a specific hashtag. And so as they're off like in their dorm rooms or wherever, and anything in their reading that, that catches their curiosity, they can post something. And the nice thing about that is um, when we meet again, we can do a screen share and uh, just search that, that, uh, that hashtag. And we have like a list of everything we were curious about as we were doing that common reading that might you know, develop into some kind of more intense conversations uh, on a topic as opposed to just the, the, the reading itself. Yeah, I like that. So we do we need a hash club for a hashtag for this then? <laughs> no, we should use the the DGURI because the whole idea is to embrace like our friend and people and see. So please, I'm gonna write it down for those who are not familiar with it. Um, but this is our our hashtag. So, and I didn't use it in my tweet to invite people. So my bad. Yeah. <laughs> Is it, uh, it, could we also create like another one that is specifically for the book club so that we invite those other folks into the conversation, but also um, we have a little bit more of a streamlined uh, collection of tweets just like solely about the book club as opposed to other things related to um, the Institute? Yeah, if, if you're interested to add like another one, uh, it's just that way we have like people come and join the conversation as well. But um, I understand for the archiving and to like look for tweets of people. Um, yeah, so you might want to, to add something else um, to it. Um, anybody who have ideas? I mean, we can just share on email or email to you or to, to me or to anybody and we can decide what would be the hashtag until next time. So maybe we should talk about next time, kind of like what, what to expect and what to do until then. How about if we go around the room and somebody who's planning on doing some reading between now and when is the next meeting, Yanti? Uh, October, Samantha, you have it in front of you? October, we need to update October, one. October 1. Okay, so three weeks. Oh, Maybe we just Sorry. go around the room and you, and you tell us what you intend to read because if I hear Ralph is reading something interesting, I'm going to be want to be in the conversation with Ralph. Right? Well, so... I I was holding I was holding this up before because I've been wanting to read it. So this is as good as excuse as any. Yeah, I um, also have a couple 
couple of podcasts that I posted on the chat that I haven't listened to, but they were just a couple that I found that might be um, an intro for people who are sort of wanting to get the gist of it without necessarily having to dig through the whole book. So there, I don't know. The second one I found was from the London School of Economics, which is probably a little going to be a little better quality than the first one. But and there might be another one out there. So if I see anything, um, I guess I'll just post it with the hashtag as soon as we settle on it. Okay, we have five minutes remaining. Samantha and and um, Michael, you want to give us any? Um, last words of insight or wisdom before we see you next month? Well, insight and wisdom is a lot to ask of. <laughs> wisdom is a, it's a huge word. I think uh, I really like the idea about the small group conversations. I think that's something really, for me, like a very good takeaway. Personally, my choice of the book would be The Powers of Two. I started reading it and I love it. So I want to continue. I also like the Thinking Fast and Slow. Um, we might have to think about how to make that work for, for next time, for October 1st. Um, that's something maybe for, I'm not sure, for anybody to, to, to think about. And um, I'm not sure what you think, uh, Samantha. Yeah, so I've been kind of taking a list of um, things to follow up on. So a lot of these questions that we have, like, for example, which, which title to run with next, um, what should our hashtag for the book club be, those kinds of things, I'll compile that into an email and send it around or maybe a Google Doc um, so that we can all kind of continue this conversation and hash out some of these details that we haven't been able to resolve just yet. Um, and then if we can all um, just go ahead and keep voting on the um, media list, which title we want to go with, um, maybe we'll say 48 hours from now, we'll go ahead and call it and whichever title has the most, we'll go with that. Um, and then we also, um, we want to kind of invite um, other people to host these sessions. So not just Michael and I like, you know, building an agenda every month and dictating anything. So if anybody wants to volunteer or kind of um, maybe I'll create a section for like uh, volunteer signups to host. Um, we'll need, a, it sounds like three um, until December. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll kind of put all that stuff together and we can continue to, to talk about all these little details. The only other thing that I wanted to bring up is um, timing. So we kind of just chose this time based on um, prior experience of global conferences. Um, I know a couple of people here in Asia actually um, wanted to participate but weren't able to, like there's um, a guy in Cambodia who really wanted to be a part of it, but um, I think it was like 4.30 in the morning for him and he just can't do it. So uh, I just wanted to kind of get a sense of timing, like is everybody, like could folks in the US maybe go a little bit later into the evening to make it, you know, whatever that does to our time, like how is timing for everyone and how flexible can you be? And I don't think that's something that we can resolve in the next two minutes, but um, I'd like to ask you to think about that and I'll include that in the list of things um, to provide input on so that um, perhaps we can um, find a time that works well globally. So one thing is that as people are writing their email, I'm compiling like a, a list. So if um, you're not on the media education lab list add your email and then we're gonna have the page about the media club on the media education lab with updates but also I think we're gonna create some kind of an email so that you can be updated um, and then Samantha once you want to send the email I can give you all the um, emails um, for people and we'll create some kind of a listserv or something uh, something similar to that so people can be um, updated on it. Uh, there's the Google Doc of the email list there. That, that was the sign-up sheet that I uh, created for to register people. So that okay. if your name is on that list, you could put your name on that list. But I think most everybody has signed up okay. for that already. Okay, great. Maybe I want to say as well quickly that we are also going to go over like the chat box. I see there's a couple of questions. And uh, of course, we're going to take a look at them, and we're also going to then uh, integrate them. Maybe like to. I really uh, like Gina's idea. Can we pick one book, one podcast, and one film for the next meeting? Now that is a cool idea.
Exactly. So that was actually, but yeah, but we are right now almost over with the time. So. Okay. Um, yeah, we're just on an hour. Um, lots of ideas to go through here. So thank you everybody for participating. And the next meeting for this will be October 1st. The uh, next Media Education Lab webinar will be October 15th. So thanks again, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice one. Thank you. Thank you.